Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And boy, oh boy, boy, oh boy, it looks like Hasbro might be ready to sell off Dungeons and Dragons to Tencent. Now, this shouldn't shock anyone who's been paying attention, but a lot of people don't pay attention. And uh, they've been talking about selling wizards and or magic and or D&D for years now. And my understanding is that the pandemic threw a wrench into those plans. Mm -hmm. So the potential buyer is Tencent, which owns Larian Studios. Uh-huh. And Larian Studios did... Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate 3 was wildly successful. So why wouldn't you want to own the whole thing? Look, I mean, I don't want people to be surprised. We've been saying, I mean, it was mostly you, been saying this for months that we thought this was going to happen, that they were going to sell because they were laying off all these people, including key people. Yeah, so- you know, they weren't doing well. No, it didn't make a lot of sense to people, and now it makes sense. Hasbro laid off a ton of people at Wizards of the Coast. In fact, the CEO of Larian said that all the people they worked with pretty much at Wizards on Baldur's Gate with, they were no longer there. So why would you do that? Well, because there's no future for Dungeons and Dragons at your company. Mm -hmm. You're going to sell the IP to Tencent slash Larian and would, let them deal with it. Wouldn't it be funny if they got rid of people because they, they went over and Larian grabbed them up before they bought it? That would be kind of funny. So that they got the people they worked with and people they wanted to work with, got Larian, scooped them up, and then, then they'll get sold. Then they'll just get rid of everybody else. Yep. This, this all makes perfect sense sense because you look at where Hasbro's at right now. They're not in a very good place financially. They've been laying people off. They've been selling assets and they said they want to focus on their core assets. Well, D&D is not a core asset for Hasbro. It's a big money maker. Wizards is a money maker, but they bought that company. They bought Wizards of the Coast and Wizards of the Coast bought Dungeons and Dragons from TSR back in the day. It's not a Hasbro thing really. And I think they realize that tabletop gaming They've seen their best years as this multi-billion dollar conglomerate. Like they're never going to sell as much as they sold during the pandemic. Well, as I, said, I think the pandemic, and that's across the board in several different, you know, between toys, media, internet, streaming, et cetera. Yeah. It, because it was such a um, once in a century event yeah. type thing. And it, Literally. It, yeah. <laughs> Every and hundred it, years. Know, right? and, it, and it ended up like uh, just for that short period of time. Everybody was stuck at home, so it just kind of boosted artificially things like streaming, game, tabletop, things like that, higher than it would normally be. And people, instead of realizing it was a temporary boost, they tripled, quadrupled down on that. And then they shifted their entire business model to, to go after that. It was never going to last longer than the pandemic was going to last. It was really, really short-sighted and not just blaming Hasbro. I mean, a lot of companies did it. And now you're seeing the results of that because all these places like streaming is cutting back the number of shows. Yep. They're all cutting back money because after it came out of it, they had all this content and they don't have the audience for it and they lost money. And then while Wizards of the Coast did fantastic during the pandemic because everybody was buying this shit, now everyone went back to work in their real life. D&D &D for them is, you know, trying to get through the day. They don't, you know, have time to play the games. They're not buying it like they did before. And they also turned around and alienated their core audience they, that were buying it. Yeah. But this new yeah. audience they, they obtained during the pandemic. Yeah, in this new audience, a lot of them don't buy things. They're trying to figure out how to monetize individuals, which I think they're desperately, that might have been desperation on their part with the whole virtual tabletop and all that to be like, oh, everybody's got to pay a subscription to D&D. &D. And trust me, you know, a company like Tencent, they'd be all about that. They'd be like, oh yeah, we're just going to make D&D &D a video game, you know, and and uh, we'll, we'll, just, uh, we'll just monetize everyone, microtransactions. So let's, uh, let's talk about this a little bit more, guys, before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news views, and rants, guys. Yeah, woohoo if you do. Woohoo. So yeah, I just want to reiterate, this is not really new news. What's new is that it's been confirmed. This has been rumored since before the pandemic. Uh, 2018, I think, was when it first started. There were rumblings about... Wizards being for sale and the pandemic threw a wrench into it. ICV2 reported on it in 2020. And uh, here we are. And this is after massive success of Baldur's Gate 3. So keep that in mind. So Speed Daily, which is a Japanese newspaper, exclusively learned that the American toy company Hasbro is seeking to sell Dungeons and Dragons. Tencent is one of the potential buyers. They haven't 
you know, worked out the details yet, but they said, according to informed sources, the financial crisis faced by Hasbro is the main reason for considering the sale of D&D. And Tencent's, in, Tencent Investments, Larian Studios, is acting as an intermediary in this transaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Larian Studios' Baldur's Gate 3 won the TGA Game of the Year Award in 2023 and is considered one of the most successful adaptations of D&D. I know it's wildly popular. Everybody loves it. They're all saying like it's a lot of really positive things about the game. As a result, it was seen as a potential target buyer by Hasbro. However, due to insufficient funds, Larian ultimately introduced this deal to shareholder Tencent. So Tencent owns part of Larian, and Larian's like, well, we're too broke-ass to buy it ourselves. But here, let me you introduce you. the game you. of the year. It's selling all those copies, but you're broke. I, well, to buy D&D, you know what that, I mean, because it, it might not just be Dungeons and Dragons. It might be all of Wizards of the Coast. Because remember, there's a lot of issues going on with Magic the Gathering now. And it, feel, it feels like a lot of this in the last year or two has been like a pump and dump scheme. Let's pump up the numbers for Wizards you know, artificially by, by publishing a bunch of stuff and republishing stuff and all the crap that they've been doing just to make it look more attractive because our plan is to sell wizards of the coast. We want to be out of the tabletop game business. You know, that that's what I think it is. Um, so they say, according to the financial report, as of Q3 in 2023, Hasbro has been experiencing consecutive losses for four quarters due to its main business of toy sales. But a lot of them based on Marvel and Star Wars, mm -hmm. and Disney crap that nobody wants. Uh, the loss from Q4 2020 to 2023 exceeds $500 million U.S. Well, did you notice, wait real quick, did you notice up here, they're talking about IPs that they own and names like Transformers, D&D, Mobile Little Pony, but the reason they're losing so much money besides D&D um, is, and Transformers, because the stuff is not very good, is because of the Marvel and the stuff that they don't own, but they do toys for. They don't mention it. They never, they never mention that. No, because like, because the actually the CEO of Hasbro at the time, uh, I think it was Brian Goldwater before he passed away. He actually blamed Disney for right. why they were losing so much money but after the last article Jedi. never mentioned. No. where they're really hemorrhaging. But anyway, yeah, continue. yeah. Well, just go to Ollie's. Just go to Ollie's. Mm -hmm. and you'll see where they're hemorrhaging. It's just all Marvel and Star Wars crap that people don't want. Um, you know, Transformers, pretty steady sellers. They've got some that are duds. Even oh, with well, the, the problem is now that the prices are too high. The prices are high. My Little Pony, I don't know what the hell they're doing with that. But the, the, it's weird. The G1s are actually outsourcing. Now the G3s, too. They're outsourcing the basic fun. Mm -hmm. So although the company as a whole is in a loss situation, its D&D-related IP is a high-quality asset and has achieved considerable success in video game adaptations. They talked about Baldur's Gate 3. It got Game of the Year and also yeah, we generated. Yeah, they've already said that already. Yeah, $657 million, surpassing Harry Potter uh, and making profit. In profit, it might have. Might have. I, I did a video on the gaming channel talking about you know Baldur's Gate making the most revenue, but it was also a more expensive game. So basically, what this tells me is that Hasbro, if it's not, if it's something that has value and it's not nailed down, they're willing to sell it. They sold E1, which was their entertainment company. And that was the thing they were going all in on. That's the company that made the Transformers movies and the G.I. Joe movies. And, and uh, they went all in on E1. And then they had a couple of misfires. And were like, yep, we'll sell that too. They sold the, what, Lionsgate, I think. They're basically having a garage sale. Well, yeah, they're saying here, outside of electronic games, D&D &D is one of the most popular tabletops in Europe and America, okay? And then go below it. Um, Tencent's IEG, Interactive Entertainment Group, Insider revealed that they represented by its overseas business department is in negotiations with the aim of acquiring a series of rights, including the adaptation rights for electronic games such as D&D. &D. Yeah, now this is weird because Hasbro, they've got Microsoft people running Hasbro. Which we brought up that many times, and it's like, you know. Uh -huh. And if they could do it in-house, and I think that's what they were trying to do because they had, like, the Hasbro game division. They were going to make games, and they were going to pivot to becoming a video game company because that's what the Microsoft people in charge thought that's what Hasbro should be. Not a toy. Basically, Hasbro wants to do everything but be a toy company, mm -hmm. which I don't understand. You know, all you have to do is be good at being Hasbro, be good at making toys, for kids and collectors and come up with some new IP. They're not even trying anymore. They're not coming up with anything new. Everything that they're doing now, they're just going back to the same well again and again. The reason that the 80s were so cool 
you know, to, to, uh, it was so cool to be a kid to have these toys is that everything was new. You know, these toy companies, Mattel and Hasbro and Kenner, they were always coming up with new stuff. They don't do that anymore. Like today's kids are getting hand-me-downs yes, and, and toys based on YouTubers and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? They're not, it's the same stuff that's been around. It's just packaged differently. Oh, now we have the exact same Optimus Prime toy we had when, you know, we, that we've made five times already, but this one's got more articulation and it costs three times as much and there's no metal because it's cheaper to make. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what they're doing. And, um, but yeah, D and D, because of the game, you know, the games is like, yeah, it's valuable now if they wait, you know, cause you could be like, well, why would they sell it if it's making profit? Well, you flip a house when the market's good, right? Mm -hmm. You don't wait until your neighborhood goes to shit and then sell your house. No, you, you go out, you get the most amount of money you can possibly get out of it. And if they're already deciding that long-term they want to be out of the tabletop game business as a company, you sell D and D for as much as you can sell it for, and right now with Baldur's Gate making so much money, now's the time. Now's the time. I do it just because I don't want to deal with all the crazy ass weirdos that like think that they own everything. I mean, now you have to constantly rewrite everything because well, this this class is bad and that's racist and this is terrible and you can't yeah. use witches and you can't use it and you're just sitting there like what the fuck and it's like you know I wouldn't I'd get rid of it just because I I could get I could get it you know a lot of money for it right now and I don't have to let them deal with it. And you know what? If it goes to Tencent, they're going to say, fuck you when you want to make all these changes. That is exactly they're it. Not gonna, they don't give two shits about your, if you're, if you're offended. Uh, we're going to, we're going to have, we're going to have uh coal black dark elves and lots of tits. They don't care. If Everybody's going to be straight. Cause this is coming from China. I'm just saying like you, you, have you seen the mobile games coming out of China? Like that's, that's what you're going to get. They're basically going to turn D and D. I don't think it'll go that far, well, but yeah, you know, but cause they still have to do, understand they're for a, you know, international market. And I think they get that, but I think that, you know, the days of whining and there's like five people are offended and they change the whole thing because of five people being offended are going to end. Tencent doesn't give a shit. They you don't know. care. They just care about making the money. It's about making the yep. money back and they're going to appeal to the wider audience, not your little niche audience that you're mad about. So there we go, guys. Uh, it does look like they're going to, or at least they're talking to selling yeah, the Tencent. Yeah, they're just talking about it right now. I think it's going to happen. They're going to sell I to somebody. I think so, too. I mean, this is lines up with everything we've been saying. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, so good luck with all that. Uh, I do think that it's, it's smart for people to migrate to other gaming systems now if you're a tabletop gamer because D&D &D as a tabletop game, I think, is ending. I think it's going to end. I think it, well, I think it'll... And at least being made by wizards, I could totally see them licensing it out, like Tencent licensing it out to Paizo or something and be like, you make D&D branded games, board games, mm -hmm. you know, because we don't want to bother with it. We're making video games. We're doing more important stuff. We're making video games that are making a half a billion dollars. You, you play around with the whatever, the, uh, the tabletop crowd. We don't really care. Are we going to wrap this up? Yes. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.